In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create a new Recollector collection from an Excel spreadsheet. You can create a new collection in Recollector that has no data in it and then use Recollector's data entry screens to type in data about the items in your collection. But a lot of people already have data about their collection in a form that Recollector can import automatically. Um, that might be in the form of a spreadsheet, or it might be in the form of a database, like a FileMaker or an Access database, or simply as a text file. And it certainly would save a lot of time if Recollector could read that data in and make the collection for you without having to type it in again. And you can do that. And this uh, video will show you how to do that. In the example you see here on the screen, I have a spreadsheet open that has data about a collection of maps, a collection of Arctic maps, and I want to make a new Recollector collection from this spreadsheet. Notice in the first row of the spreadsheet, there are field names, map maker, title, date, and so forth and so on. If you're making a collection from a spreadsheet, the first row of that spreadsheet has to have field names as shown here in this example. And the reason for that is that if the first row didn't have field names, Recollector would have no way of knowing what are the fields it should use in constructing the new database for you. So, let's see how you proceed here. Let's start up Recollector. And when it opens, uh, it's now showing the last collection that I happen to be working with. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to create a new collection. So I'm going to switch over to the control window and click on the Create New Collection button. It tells me I have to close the existing collection that's open, so let's do that. And now we are at a window that's asking us to make a choice. Do we want to create a new empty collection with no data in it, or do we want to create a collection from existing data, and that is what we want to do. And we want the second choice here, to create a new collection from an Excel spreadsheet. I mentioned before that if you have your data in a database, um, that you can also use that to bring data into Recollector. And that would be using the delimited text file, the third choice here. Almost all databases have a facility for writing out a table's worth of data in the form of what's called a CSV, comma separated values file, um, where the individual, each row is, is one item uh, from the table and the fields are separated either by commas or by tab characters. And Recollector can use um, those kinds of files to create a collection as well as the spreadsheet example that we're showing you right now. Okay, let's proceed next to click Create Collection. Now Recollector is asking us to identify the spreadsheet that has our data in it. And in my case, in the Maps folder, I have this Arctic Maps XLS spreadsheet. So I'm going to click that. Recollector is briefly open the uh, spreadsheet. You probably saw it opening there. And then it brings up this window. And this window is the um, heart of the creation process. Now I'm going to interrupt for just a second here. Um, I've been showing you the Windows version, how this is done on the Windows version, but if you are running the Macintosh version of Recollector, the steps for getting here are a little bit different. I want to show that. Um, so let me open up um, the Macintosh window, and you'll see here I have the same spreadsheet open here um, on the Macintosh. And when I start up Recollector, Instead of uh, showing me a window with an existing collection, I'm just seeing a menu bar here. Um, and from the menu bar, I can choose New Collection. And here um, I can choose, here it's the third choice, to create a new collection from an Excel worksheet. Click Create Collection. And in the case of the Macintosh version, the Excel spreadsheet it, it uses is the one that is open and active on your screen. So on the Macintosh, you first open the worksheet, as you see I've done here, and then you invoke Recollector. And now we'll click Proceed. 
and now we are seeing the same window that we saw on the Windows version. And from here on out, the uh, two systems operate identically. But I just wanted to show you the different way you get to here on the Mac version. All right, let's return back to the Windows version. You have to provide Recollector a few bits of additional information. One is the title of the collection. Here it has chosen the title based on the file name Arctic Maps. Let's put a space in there. And then it shows us each of the fields that it found in the spreadsheet. You can include all of the fields or you can uh, exclude some of the fields by turning off the checkbox prior to any of the fields that you don't want to include. Now, Recollector also needs to know the type of data that each field holds. And it makes a best guess after having scanned the data in the spreadsheet, and it shows you this in the data type column. But you can override what Recollector um, guesses at if you have better knowledge about what kinds of data the fields hold. Um, let's look through these one at a time. Uh, MapMaker, it says one line text. One line text is text that holds you know, relatively short text, um, something that doesn't need multiple lines. In MapMaker, one line text should be fine. Notice that there's this preview data button. If I click that, down here it shows uh, the first few rows um, of the spreadsheet, it shows the values that are in that field. So that can help remind me of what kind of data is there and uh, what kind of data type that might be appropriate for it. Let's continue on. Title, multi-line text, that seems fine. Now for the next one, date, it's guessing one-line text. That's, let's preview that data. Well, we just see some years here, but obviously in some of the rows there must be some additional characters that make it think it's a text. But we know better. This really is a date, and so I'm going to change the data type to date. The next two, height and weight, it's guessing those are numbers. But Recollector also has a dimension data type, and that would really be the appropriate one to use here. So let's make those both be dimension. Region. Multi-line text, well, I think we probably can get along with a one-line text there. Condition, that might be multi-line. Date acquired, that's another date field. Acquired from, I think we can get away with one-line text there. And price, now price, we actually have a currency data type. So even though it looks like a number, we'll tell it it's actually a currency. So now we've gone through and we've fixed up the data types. Um, that Recollector will use when it's uh, importing the data. And the last thing is the thing at the bottom has, has to do with what's called the ID number field. All Recollector collections contain an ID number field. It's used to uniquely identify each record. Um, if you have a field that already can, can play that function from the ones that it pulled in from the spreadsheet, you can choose to use that. Otherwise, you can do as I've done here, ask it to create an ID number field and to automatically generate sequential ID number values for me. So, I think I'm ready to go. Let's click OK. And now it's asking me to store the resulting collection file away somewhere. And it's suggesting as a, a name for that file, arcticmaps.xml. All Recollector collections are saved as a single XML file. So that name, that's fine. And I'll have it put it here in the same maps folder that the original spreadsheet was in. That's fine too. Save. And now the last step is it's telling me that it created the collection successfully, but there's some modifications that I might want to make. I might want to add some new fields that weren't there in the spreadsheet, or I might want to make some modifications to fields. Um, I can make those modifications now, but any of these things can be changed later as well. So um, you're not required to do anything additional now. And so let's click the No Further Changes Now button, and up comes the collection, excuse me, comes up the collection window. So um, all of the 202 rows of that spreadsheet have now been imported, and I can see them. I can look at any individual row to see the details there. This has clearly saved me a lot of typing, um, not having to re-enter the data for this particular map collection. And as I mentioned before, you can do the same thing, bringing in data from a uh, comma-separated values file, which you can generate from pretty much any 
of the uh, typical database programs that are out there. So that's how you get started making a collection uh, from existing data.